Ah, Nara. Well, have you guys seen the YouTube videos of deer bowing to people to get food? Well, guess where that's at? It's in Nara. Nara was Japan's very first capital and while it has its fair share of culture and tradition, the city is also known for its local wildlife, and I'm referring to the deer. In Nara, deer are believed to be messengers of God, and they are such a common sight you won't miss them. For a real hands-on experience, visit Nara Park where you'll see hundreds of deer just hanging around. The fun begins when you buy some deer crackers at a cost of 200 yen each and start feeding them with it. Feeding can get intense as the deer are used to people giving them food, so you might get surrounded pretty quickly and they are known to bite at people to get their attention. It doesn't hurt exactly but it's annoying to feel something nip you in the butt every few seconds. So when things get too hot, just throw the snacks on the floor away from you and just run. Run and don't look back. The Todaiji Temple is Nara's most historical site and houses one of Japan's largest bronze statues of Buddha. It's 15 meters tall and is the main attraction of Nara, aside from the deer of course. And fun fact, there's a pillar with a hole at its base that's the same size as the statue's nostril. If you can squeeze through the hole, it is said that you'll be granted enlightenment in your next life. A great way to tour Nara is actually by bike, and you can rent some of the station when you first arrive. There's plenty of space for cyclists on the road and also in the park. Osaka is one of the largest cities in the Kansai region and is well known for its colorful cast of characters, Universal Studios, and of course, the Glico Running Man advertisement. If you're looking for a fun time, you'll find it here in Osaka. The Osaka Aquarium is a great place to spend an afternoon, especially if you're traveling with kids. It is the world's largest aquarium and has multiple large tanks where you'll see many different kinds of aquatic life, including dolphins, seals, and freaking whale sharks. To those of you who are bringing a kid stroller, know that there are some parts of the aquarium that's only accessible by stairs so you'll have to wait for an elevator to get to different areas of the aquarium. This isn't a big problem per se, but the elevators in Japan are small. Sometimes they only fit two to three people at a time, so there could be a long queue. I would recommend just using a baby carry instead, just to make moving a whole lot easier. Next, for a truly unique cultural experience that is exclusive to Osaka, Visit the Japanese puppet theater or Bunraku which originated in Osaka during the 17th century. This is a tradition that has been kept alive for centuries and at the National Bunraku Theater, you'll be able to watch live puppetry performances where there will be three puppeteers who work in unison to bring life to these puppets as well as a narrator who will narrate the story. Here are a few tips for you to increase your enjoyment of the bunraku. Number one, to catch all the details of the puppet's movements and to better immerse yourself in the whole story and the whole performance, you'll need to sit as close to the front as possible to catch all of the details. Yeah, You can order your tickets online at the theater's website and don't worry, I've left it in the description box below for you. Get your tickets early for better seats. Next, you should come a bit earlier before the show and explore the display slash mini museum that's at the ground floor near the entrance. There's some information on the history of the show, the puppets, and the meaning of the performance. So this will give you a better appreciation of the performance when it begins. Also, the English audio guides are a must and they are available on the second floor of the theater. They cost 700 yen to rent and there's a refundable deposit of 1000 yen. You'll not only be able to understand the story a whole lot better, but the guides also provide additional information such as the training that the performers have to undergo, how the background sets are made, and more. Finally, you'll want to buy a box lunch or a bento before arriving at the theater. As the show is 4 hours long, you'll probably get hungry and while the theater does sell bentos, you'll get better variety and at a lower cost in the local convenience stores outside. Osaka is also a food capital, so if you want a taste of what the city has to offer, hop on over to Dotonbori, which is like a food street, 
where you can just walk and taste different kinds of delicacies. Things like okonomiyaki, crab, takoyaki, and ramen. These are all specials in the Tombori, and it is in the Minami area, which is a 10 minute walk from Namba Station. And the whole place is always bustling, even at night. It is filled with pachinko slot machines, food stalls, and great places for shopping. I definitely recommend going at night because that's when this area really lights up, especially with all the colorful neon signs. You get a whole new view of the area altogether. In Kobe, the Nuno Biki Herb Garden is popular for its displays of about 75,000 herbs and over 200 different kinds of flowers that are spread out in its 12 different gardens. The plants are seasonal, so no matter when you decide to visit, there will always be herbs and flowers for you to see, touch, and smell. There's also a few facilities where you can learn more about fragrances and essential oils, as well as how to use them like at the Fragrance Museum, the Herbal House, and the Spice Museum. The best way to enjoy your visit here is to take the cable car to the top of the hill when you first arrive, then make your way downwards because the slopes in this area is actually steep, so it's hard to climb up, especially if you depend on a wheelchair to move around. The cable car journey takes 10 minutes each way, and at the top, there's a cafe where you can sip some coffee and maybe even have lunch, as you enjoy the view of Kobe City. Next, the Kobe Animal Kingdom seems like a zoo at first, but it isn't called one. Plus, it has a 1700 yen entrance fee, which is considerably higher than the entrance fee of regular zoos. So why is this place even worth mentioning? Well, the reason is that most animals here are freely roaming around instead of being kept inside cages or glass walls, and you're free to pet and touch them. This is a great place for kids and adults alike because where else can you pet a giant Galapagos tortoise, pet capybaras, and be up close to anteaters, toucan birds, and even feed red pandas. If you have nothing else to do, then this place is a great way to spend an afternoon. Finally, we have Kobe Harborland. Between JR Kobe Station and the waterfront of Kobe's port area, you'll find Kobe Harborland, which is the shopping and eating district of the city. Here you'll find a huge shopping center called Umie, which consists of three parts, Mosaic, South Mall, and North Mall. If you're looking for food or some drinks, then you'll want to head to Mosaic, which stretches along the waterfront and is where most of the restaurants and bars are. Once you're done eating, you can take a walk around the port area, it's very relaxing, or if you want to do some shopping, head to the South or North Mall to get your shopping done. If you're here at night, then you'll get to see the port with its beautiful night illuminations. There's also a ferris wheel that you can take to have a great view of the city. And last but definitely not least, we have Hiroshima. As you probably know, this city was destroyed in 1945 when the first atomic bomb was dropped on top of it. It has since been rebuilt into one of Japan's busiest cities, but has also maintained several historical sites that allow us to reflect on the issues of war and nuclear warfare. The Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum is where you'll find plenty of information like pictures, stories, and artifacts that were left behind by people who suffered in the aftermath of the bombing. It gives a realistic look not just at the bombing itself, but also on the events that led up to it and how the city and its people recovered after that. As this is a popular attraction, do expect crowds of people in the museum. And since you're in the area, head on over to the Atomic Bomb Dome, a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The bomb actually detonated right above the building and the skeleton that's left behind has been preserved as a reminder of the damage. You can't enter the building for obvious reasons, but you are free to reflect as you stare at it outside. If all this reflecting has gotten you hungry, then head on over to Okonomiura for some of the best okonomiyaki that Hiroshima has to offer. And okonomiyaki is a Japanese savory pancake that's topped with things like cabbage, eggs, bacon, cheese, and noodles. It is Japan's soul food and it is really delicious. 
Okonomiura is basically a 5 story building that only sells okonomiyaki. There are about 5 stalls on each floor that all sell okonomiyaki. So just pick one at random and order whatever you want. Because to me, the flavors don't really differ that much from each other. And that is it for my list. I hope the information has been useful to you. Let me know what you think in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you have anything else you'd like to add to the cities that were mentioned here, leave them in the comments and I'll add them in the description box for everyone else to see. And with that, I will see you guys in the next episode.